All right, not tonight. This week, I should say, we have a big Democratic uh, Republican race in North Carolina. The the North Carolina race is really one of those things that's just going to give us, a, you know, it doesn't mean much in ter- in practice. What it what why people are looking to it is because it's an indication of just how uh, dramatic Donald Trump's bleeding is. Um. North Carolina, too, is about a week away now, uh, maybe a week and a half away from a deadline which was imposed upon them by a superior court to redraw their districts. And Republicans uh, are not contesting this. I would I would argue it's probably because of these revelations that they must have had a heads up about by the guy who had drawn the maps for them. This is the. Famous guy, we, we talked about him a lot in the context of the census question, this guy Hoffeller, who apparently, and uh, now uh, these documents are out, would give lessons to state legislatures on how to redraw maps using his data and, and literally told them never, ever use email. No one can see this stuff. And apparently uh, he thought he was going to live forever and that his uh, strange daughter would not comb through his things and give up the ghost and reveal all of this in literally gigabytes of documents that she found. Um, So a fascinating turn of events. And we'll see. It's going to have broader implications. It, It could have implications at the Supreme Court, although I imagine they're not going to revisit these cases. Remember, the Supreme Court will weigh in on gerrymanders that are racially based, but they won't. They say they can't. They don't know how to do it on a partisan basis. Now, state courts have shown they can do it on a partisan basis. But if it comes out that all of the contested districts that we've been talking about for years in these cases were undergirded by a racial analysis, um, it's going to have some broader implications. And to a certain extent, it's hard to imagine they couldn't. When you think about the states that we're talking about, And you think about the fact, that simply a fact, there's one party in America that is all white. That is based around an identity of whiteness. That is the Republican Party. That's simply a fact. They talk about identity politics. The reason why they don't have to talk about identity politics, they only have one identity. The Democratic Party is made up of white people and black people and Latino people and Asian people. (laughs) And if you're going to try and figure out how to give Republicans the advantage in many of these states and you want to maximize it, Chances are you're probably using race as a factor. And that's certainly what this guy did. So um, that's a big deal. Uh, This race in North Carolina, the debate coming up. um, There's data showing that Biden, or at least stories that we're hearing that, uh, you know, even in Bidenville, uh, people are a little worried. Do not think that his lead is terribly durable. Uh, I think if you look at uh, some of the stuff coming out about Warren that you see, um, whether it moves you or not, I think a lot of that's coming from the Biden camp at Rendell going and saying that I had Elizabeth Warren at a, at a fundraiser a year ago. She had no problem with the big money that we have now. She only has a problem with it now. Two different ways of looking at that. One is she was uh, doing big money a year ago. Uh, the other is she's no longer doing big money. So, but, uh, nevertheless, Ed Rendell is not out there, um, fighting for anybody but Joe Biden. 
part of that old man white guy club that uh, wants to reach those people in the suburbs. 